Pixels. I am Jensen and welcome back to Dagon's Drogma Bark Drizzle. I was just about to summarize where we were at. So in the previous episode, we had beaten the game, or as I like to call it, the tutorial. It took us, well, what, about 25, 26 hours or so? And unfortunately, after you beat the game, you get into all of these challenge areas, which are just so sick. We have unlocked something called the Everfall. We have collapsed the world... We stand at the like, we have, we have eliminated it. It is Gehenna here. This place is completely toast. And now the only thing left for us to do is to kind of like ascend to godhood, which was not advertised in the base game ever, and neither was the kind of collapse of the world. We're in the middle of the uh, of Grand Siren right now. But the whole story of this game, and if you've ever seen the uh, Dragon's Dogma anime I'm on Netflix, does a really good job of articulating this. Time. Universes and video games mean Nothing it means absolutely nothing. When you're in a video game, everything is temporary. Everything only lasts as long as you are there for it. Uh, I think we've cleared out this room, so we'll go back. This was the one full of Saurians. And uh, time is an endless loop. So when you beat the game in this, New Game Plus is actually the story of the game. And I don't think I have ever seen that implemented in such a way in another video game before. Aside from, of course, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, we're also talking about, like, game passes and their relationship to, kind of, uh, owning games outright. Game Pass is much better games, in my opinion, and PlayStation Plus isn't available on PC, so it's pretty useless for me. Yeah, but PlayStation Plus is available for console. I think that Xbox is worthless, and the CEO of Xbox also uh, has agreed by saying that they lost the console war with Sony. Uh, interestingly enough, the PlayStation games... This, they still hold a place. I still have a PlayStation 4. PlayStation 5 came out last year, and uh, people still have PlayStation 5s now. Uh, half my friends have them. I'm still playing PlayStation 4. And the reason I play PlayStation 4, while I have this gigantic, enormous gaming setup in front of me with ring lights and cameras and a 40 series graphics card and all that crap, is because, we've also played this room, is because when you press a button on a PlayStation controller, it doesn't matter what you did all day. It doesn't matter. Within 30 seconds of pressing that button, you can have a movie, TV show, or a game in front of you at command. Less than a minute it takes, right, to have one of those things up in front of you. And if you've had a long day and you're just kind of like sick of having to deal with all of the, the, the crap of the world, sometimes you just want to put something on and not have to worry about uh, massively controlling it, which is the entire point of a PC. If you are probably playing video games as much as, you know, <laughs> realistically, me, my viewers, everyone on YouTube are, then chances are you'll probably want a PC, simply because you can get multiple screens so you can watch YouTube on one screen, and on the other screen you can play a video game, which consoles just don't allow. My family has always been an Xbox family. Halo 4 was my first game that wasn't a Lego game. Ah, so I'm a bit biased. Yeah, I, I, um, I loathe Xbox, uh, what it is now. The Xbox One is crap. Uh, Xbox 360 was okay. Perfect. Okay, good. This is where we shine with magic, and we are also being ambushed by monsters we have not already killed. I grew up uh, with a PlayStation 1 when I was really, really young. My first games were Doom, Nightmare Creatures, and 40 Winks. No, not Doom. That was on PC, and that was at my dad's place. Silent Hill. Silent Hill, Nightmare Creatures, 40 Winks. Those three on PS1. And eventually I graduated PS2, then I graduated PS3, and then I went to Xbox, original Xbox, because of Morrowind. God, I love that game so much. I replaced everything that I had with original Xbox. When I got Morrowind, that was like three flat years of just like, whatever time that I have to myself, here, play Morrowind. So I'd have like a few hours to myself when I was a kid when I wasn't doing chores and stuff for, uh, for the family. Or like managing school or whatever like that. We also had to spend three hours on a bus every day. So I, I just didn't have a lot of time to really spend with myself. Oh, and of course, I played a lot of guitar too. A lot of, a, a lot of guitar. I used to uh, like sit there. We'd have uh, restrictions on internet. I'd sit there and I'd learn an entire album in one sitting by ear. And I'd be very, very good at it. Okay, let's start firing out some other rounds. Maybe some magic arrows would do the trick well. Good, that's one of them taken care of. Are we going to one-shot this guy? No. Two-shot. Okay. But yeah, every time, every chance that I got that wasn't spent basically just learning how to play music and managing everybody's life around me was spent playing Morrowind on original Xbox. I love that so much. It was such a good console. 
I think they all went downhill after the first Xbox. And this isn't just kind of like a, oh, I grew up on, on Sega Dreamcast and that was the best console ever kind of flex like a lot of people do when they want to sound refined, but they're actually coming uh, off as a, a massive dickhead, nice. like a massive standoffish dickhead. And they, they never realize this until they hit about 50 because all of their friends left them. Um, but Xbox, original Xbox, unironically, the best console I have played. And even still, I got a PS4 now. The only thing that I like more about the PS4 than I liked more than the Xbox original was the graphics. And of course, there's probably significantly more games that are probably worth playing now. But just the inclusion of Morrowind on original Xbox, absolutely fantastic. And the reason I liked uh, Xbox 360 so much was, of course, Oblivion. God, I loved Oblivion so much as well. Okay, so we can't go through that door right there. We are The purpose of what we're doing right now is we are collecting Wakestone shards, and we're collecting Wakestones. We need about 25. We need five of them for the post-game content after we beat this post-game content. And we're also going to need uh, roughly 20 of them, no, exactly 20 of them to kind of like ascend into, I kid you not, godhood. That is the point of this game. Okay, good, there's a phantom there. Let's kind of dissipate his magic uh, kind of quickly, if we can, while we focus on these skeletons. Good, that's good, and try to take care of that phantasm, but he is just too slippery. All right, one more, one more and he's dead. Go, excellent. Nice, Scarby took him out. I'll pick up this coin pouch and also this astrocyte shard. What are you guys firing at? I'm targeting nothing. What are they seeing that I'm not? Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes more sense, actually. Okay, let's go ahead and just start firing at that thing. We got it. Nice. We got a phantasm down. This game's plot is insane. I love it so far. It, yeah, you're seeing basically uh, post-campaign. So the way the game plays is that it's basically like Monster Hunter, right? With like very, very strict RPG elements. Like, like Witcher. Like the Witcher. Where you die, you reload a save. That's essentially it, right? And after you beat the campaign, which I would probably consider to be the, the tutorial of the game, you get access to this oh, area called the Everfall, where it basically just puts you into arena of after arena after arena of uh, all of the in-game monsters. Ah, oh, there's a Wakestone Shard right here too. Perfect! Uh, we are almost at the point where we can ascend to Godhood as well. Let's see how many Wakestones we have. We have those uh, materials. Whoops. Where are they? Here they are. We got 15 wake stones, we got two shards, so we get one more shard, we get another wake stone. Nice! Love it! I love that so much! Okay, we completely 100% of this area. Let's go back to the Everfall and we'll go and find another area to go and start slamming. So yeah, the way you play this game is basically... Let's put some music on. It's basically by just like... The, the campaign. Okay, so you go through the campaign and you'll come across monsters like Cyclopes, Ogres... You'll come across dragons, worms technically. The in-game boss is a dragon. Uh, all of the rest of them are worms. And you can actually do this thing called grappling, where you, like, grapple onto a monster and crawl around them and, like, target their weak spots. So I've got Scarby here. She is mine. She is my pawn. She is my companion right here. And the other two are rented out from other players. But I'm trying to build Scarby into being a fist-fighting a fist wrestler. So she's going to be able to crawl around all of the monsters and then just wail on them with her fists. I can't wait until it actually works out, though. Uh, she's currently a little bit low on stamina, but that should fix itself pretty soon as well. Let's go ahead and see what this one entails. It's such a great game. Oh, my God. And it's it's quite regularly on Steam, around about 6 bucks New Zealand. So if you live in the US, that's about 4 bucks. It's so worth it. It is... Oh, Chamber of Hope. I think we have been here, but I don't think we beat what was on the other side of this. So now that we're a little bit more refreshed, we should be able to kind of, like, do this, right? Let's try for the Ricochet Seeker. We didn't have this last time we came in here. And it does actually clap with damage. Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna keep we're gonna spam this. We're gonna play we're gonna spam the Ricochet Seeker and we're gonna keep on getting these hellhounds right here. Because they are actually cancer. They fire all these fireballs at us. If you ever played like Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, or 4 on the Game Boy. This game is essentially what you remember that game being. Okay, Scarby is being railed by a hellhound. Now I am being railed by a hellhound. Fortunately, they took him out before I could get hit by him. Excellent. Nice. Wakestone! Nice. Right there, and we got some modeled fur. No, hellhound fang. Great. That'll allow us to upgrade some of our gear. Uh, I should probably also explain for anybody who's really coming to the party late uh, how the companion system works. So you get one companion right at the start of the game. And you can't actually do 
a lot with them. You kind of like, the, the longer you play with them, they kind of like build, oh my god, I one hit all of those. They build into their own stats, right? So whatever class you pick for them, they'll start building into those stats. Like if you're a warrior, your strength and your HP will increase. And uh, that's basically as simple as it gets. If you set them as a mage, then their magic is going to increase, at their magic attack, and also their stamina so they can cast spells. Guys, loot all of this. I don't want to do this myself. What is wrong with you? Uh, but you have to rent out the other two party slots that you have from other players, which is such a cool little addition to an already very awesome economy. This game is probably the best RPG I have ever played. Uh, we're probably going to have to go topside to start depositing a lot of the stuff because we're getting pretty slowed down. No one else wants to loot. It's a little bit of a shame, even though they're crapping out gigantic sacks of money. Awesome. Uh, we'll come down here. We'll see what is in this room. And if it is a big, big nasty, we're going to give Scarby... No, Jax, all of our stuff. Jax is probably the best one to take it all so far. Okay. Well, there's a lot of mages in there. Okay, we probably need the mobility. Let's go ahead and start giving a lot of this heavy stuff. We don't have a lot of heavy stuff, actually. What else we got? Uh, yeah, that's heavy. We got a giant warhammer. Let's give that to Jax or Scarby. Let's give it to Scarby. Uh, what else we got that's heavy? Probably not a lot else. I think there's wake stones, honestly. We got a lot of healing items as well. Potent green warish. Oh, okay, we'll just eat that without thinking about what it does. We'll give this to Scarby, whatever it is. Purifying brew, give it to Scarby. Sure. Celebrus brew. Those are kind of overpowered. They kind of almost entirely restore your health if you know what you're doing. All right, let's get our bow out, our magic bow. Oh, that's a gold chimera! Oh no! Oh no! This is- Oh my god, it's after us! This is bad! Okay, let's start firing away at it. We are doing no damage. That is a big bad. Let's go ahead and try for a ricochet seeker, actually. This will probably be the place for a nice close quarters ricochet seeker. Boom. Okay, that was useless, actually. We need to lure him in here. Otherwise, not so great. We'll try for a six-fold again, right on the goat's head. Uh, did no damage. Oh, piss. And he's aggroed on us. No! Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Oh! And we did. <laughs> we're also a glass cannon. No, we don't want to use a wake stone. We're saving those up. Uh, we're a glass cannon build. Essentially, we were a sorcerer for the whole time. We've got no armor. We've got no health stats. And we just uh, changed our class to be a bit more potent without, without really kind of like harming our level progression. I'm going to try... For this fire barrel right here, actually. Okay, it's gonna come for us. Okay, like like a like a submissive uh, partner in bed. Okay, we want him to come over here real quickly. Okay, that is exequy. If we get caught in that, it's just one hit death. Bro, this right in his. Oh my god, seriously? <laughs> no! <laughs> I completely whipped that shot. Uh, while those guys are fighting the Gore Chimera, I'm gonna start taking out these skeletons. Because they are kind of arse, actually. Let's go ahead and just fire a single hunter bolt. Probably be the best. Boom! Okay, that wasn't particularly useful. We got hit by a bolt of lightning. That's not too great. Let's get our bow back out and we'll just try for this. Because it seems to be the best option anyway. Alright, this one dead. I'm hoping that this Gore Chimera isn't about to come after us. Ah, there we go. Here is a Skellington. We have to take him out because he's actually a piece of garbage. We did not want to be hit by that. Why are we so slow? Oh, there's a chest over here. Maybe we'll find something that would help us in this fight. Grizzly bone armor. Oh, actually, this would help us in a fight, you know? Let's go ahead. Oh, okay. Apparently, we didn't give this back to Scarby. There you go, Scarby. You can hold on to that really heavy thing that I don't want. This grizzly bone armor, I seem to remember, is actually really, really potent uh, kind of defensive armor. So we're going to go into our equipment, and we're going to go into Scarby's screen, and let's see if she can't wear it. Ah, uh, she won't. But it is... Pretty good for a warrior, which we may specialize her as if we want to increase her attack damage. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and fire some Ricochet Seekers into this room. This should be doing a heap of damage. Like so. Please? Please do damage. Oh, damn, that Gore Chimera is actually healing faster than we can damage it. Let's go ahead and just try... Maybe take out more of these Skellingtons, because they are a little bit obnoxious. Okay, one there. Fortunately, with the magic in this game, there's kind of like an area of effect very, very shortly before the spell ends up hitting that you can kind of use to gauge whether or not you... Right there. That right there is a spell, and I'm going around it because I am smart. 
I'm not going to throw it. What the hell? You can't make me do that. Okay, good. Let's start firing down here. I don't know what the hell that miasma is, but we don't really want to find out. What is this? Panacea, perfect. And a small coin pouch and a fairy stone. Great. We may use that. We may use that. So now that we're down here, let's fire off a ricochet seeker into here. Because Oh, hello! so much worse than it did good i'm glad it went uh, as as well as it did though all right let's take this guy out we'll stun him which prevents him from casting which is just by its own merit useful the closest thing to me playing a game like this is the cat quest series i love the cat quest series so much i just saw the third one came out and i'm oh, val just fell off the ledge here oh nice they've knocked off the snake tail and the gore chimera has fallen off the ledge however I can't really do a hell of a lot with that. So let's go ahead and fire... No, we probably actually want to fire... No, none of those. Comestion. Let's fire a nice wall of fire right beneath this Gore Chimera. And we'll hope that he doesn't move by the time we cast it. And up goes the wall of fire. Boom. Nice. Ah, uh, he's aggroed on us. Oh, no. Oh, no. What's going to happen? Is he coming after us? I'm waiting to react. I'll the I'm also hoping that uh, my pawns will come. Oh, damn it. We got one hit. <laughs> ah, creature jumps get Yeah, it's, it's that kind of game, actually. It's one of those games where it's not intended to be horror, but when you get jumped in the darkness from around the corner by something like that, it is genuinely terrifying. Let's go topside and we'll deposit a bunch of our stuff because we're massively over over encumbered. Cat Quest 3 is insanely good. I was surprised at how different it felt from the other two games. Really? Oh, that is great to hear. Because when I when I first played the first Cat Quest game, I was like, oh, it's just a, a simple throwaway game. I'll just I'll just play it for a for a, it, it just to just to kill some time and and I'll see what what ends up happening. And I ended up playing it for ten straight hours. <laughs> I only had like half an hour to spare. I ended up playing it for ten flat hours. I almost beat it as well in one sitting. And then I saw Cat Quest two dropped, and I was like, hell yeah, I'm buying that. Immediately bought that. Loved it so much. I love all the secret bosses that they stick in their games as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to jump into this gigantic Chasmus pit. I don't even think Chasmus is a word. I just made it up. I pulled it out of my ass, which is a talent of mine. I'm actually able to pull a lot of things out of my ass. Okay, we'll grab onto this one here so we can go topside. Hello there, lady. Please don't address me. For the sake of practicality, I do not exist. Uh, we'll come around this corner right here. We are really weighed down. I don't know what's weighing us down. It probably is the wake stones, but it could be literally anything else. Yeah, Cat Quest 2. I love that one as well. I sat there. I was like, okay, I'll only play an hour or two of it. And then another 10 hours later, I was like, oh, I did that thing again. I only got halfway through at that time as well. So the expansions that they added to Cat Quest 2, Apex. Absolutely Apex. I love how the whole game map is just like in front of you as well. Oh, there's no restrictions. You're restricted only to skill. That is such a cool touch. There's not many games that actually allow you to do that, which is just kind of like a little bit stupid. I don't really, I don't really like the hand-holding of a lot of games these days because it's it's kind of one of those things that just, it annoys me. Okay, we'll get rid of this Hasper milk because it's kind of heavy. Light Cure is actually heavier than the Hasper milk, which is annoying. Uh, all of this crap as well can go in the bank. All of these tools right here, fairies own run the bank. Uh, we probably don't want to keep any of these materials here on us. Probably want to keep all of that. Uh, this anel tooth, we're definitely going to put that away because it sucks ass. Uh, we've got 16 wake stones. I don't know how heavy they are. Oh, they are definitely taking up all of our weight. Oh my god. That's insane. They almost weigh 10 kilos. Maybe we just want to deposit them for the sake of practicality as well. Okay, no more stuff in here. Let's go ahead and empty Scarby's inventory. Okay, we won't put away any of that stuff. Val has a couple of materials here. And we'll go up to Jax, who has two secret softeners. He can keep those, actually. Petrifaction is really annoying. Oh, we got a white hydro scale. Definitely use that to upgrade something. What will it be Good. Today? So, now what we want to do is actually withdraw to Val. We want to take some curatives. And we want to take the ones that we have 564 of. Val. All right. She's getting 10 of these, 15 of these bad boys. And Jax is getting 20 and they are going to heal us basically as we go along so we don't have to heal ourselves will it be today? Have your pick. nice you come again? i know this game looks over complicated like if you guys are just getting into uh the stream or this game right now i know it looks really complicated but it is not complicated once you kind of like understand the few mechanics that the game does have the game just does them really really well 
And there's always a point at which in the game you can think, oh, there's always an upgrade. That's, that's probably my favorite part about this game. That's probably why I keep on coming back to it. I've dumped thousands of hours into this game easily. All right, Caxton right here. The idol. We probably want to think about buying ourselves some armor while it is on the mind. And I don't think that our helmet is really the thing that's letting us down. Probably want to maybe get some better... Maybe... Maybe we don't want these ass robes. Maybe we want something that's... That gives us a bit more protection. <laughs> we look so stupid. <laughs> I forgot just how short and dumb we look. Uh, we can't afford the lamella jacket. Actually, the lamella jacket would probably actually be ideal. Sage's robe would probably not do us any good either. Okay, we'll just keep what we've got for now. We're pretty close, actually, to just beating the game. Probably need to go into an inn and sleep a few times, and then all of the monsters in the Everfall should reset. And we'll be able to get more wake stones, so we can transcend the game. And we'll start New Game Plus, where we're just going to go for a 100% run, like flat out. Hi, Iqbal. I need to sleep here. I'll stay until morning. Not that it looks any different in the sky now that we've caused the rapture. Okay, good. Why all the way over here? Hey, buddy. If have your pick, what will it be understood? Now, I think two days is how long it takes to even fall to refresh. So we're going to go ahead and sleep for three. Because it could have been nighttime when we... No, it could have been daytime when we slept there first. Which would put us at less than what we needed. I don't know why I keep coming down here to go into the Everfall. It's much more fun just to leap off into the chasm. All right. Ah. We'll come down here. And we will jump down here. Because I don't want to live. All right, let's grab onto this ledge right here. A gate. And we'll continue the onwards. I love singing that, by the way. I sing I Don't Want to Live every now and then, and my friends will be all like, forever! And they don't hear me say it, and they're all like, oh. Okay. Oh, we haven't been in here. Oh, probably for the best, though, to be quite honest, this place is kind of ass to look at. Alright, guys, engage in the fight. Why are you crowding around me? Okay, I think Jax just destroyed a, a giant barrel for no reason. Good, okay. We've knocked his tail off. We're actually doing a pretty substantial amount of damage. I know it, it probably doesn't look like we're like one hitting enemies, which is not really the point of the game. The point of the game is to just deal consistent damage to a point where you can very reasonably kind of like take on enemies rather than one hitting them. Like you can one hit enemies. I want to pull out my bow, not my, not my stave. Okay, I knocked his tail off. We're going for weak spots on these little lizards here. Go ahead and keep on firing away at these. Go down here. Any what do we feel about like um I don't want to say farming sims I want to say more like oh what are they like Stardew Valley type games do we actually like them on the channel I could probably uh, play one of those in the near future there's been a couple of games that have been on my on my list for a long time for example Traveler's Rest that one is absolutely fantastic it's probably now better than Stardew Valley like, obviously, the farming oh, mechanics no are there, and, and you can do all the same stuff in Stardew Valley. But you also run a tavern, so it's kind of like a shop simulator as well. Oh, nice. Is that a Wakestone Shard? Wakestone! That's profit. Love it. You love to see it. I don't see any enemies. Uh, but we actually do have a little a little dude that can seek enemies out for us. Let's fire this off, see where it goes. Okay, no enemies. That's fine. Good to know. I haven't played many of those games. Would be interesting to see on your channel. Okay, I'll consider it. Because I'm now looking at kind of like other longer play games that we can just sit here and play for six flat hours. Like this was one of those games. This was definitely one of those games. We played this for an entire day a couple of days ago. Interesting. God, it was so worth it too. All right, let's pick all that up. Come on, guys. Panacea. Very nice. But we're kind of like reaching the end of life for this game. We're going to go for a 100% run in the new game plus where we kind of like don't do all of the bad oh, stuff. We don't, we don't get all the bad quest endings. And we want to see everything else. We also want to bugger the Duke's wife as well. Because, oh, I think that's where we came in. What the hell is going on here? I see like a, a bunch of, is there like a, is there a golem down there? Hellhounds what is that? Lie. Oh, okay, hellhounds. Yeah, these guys are the pits. These guys actually suck ass. I don't know how that hit me. Uh, or how that hit me. I don't know how that one hit me either because it doesn't have an area of effect. Okay, let's fire a ricochet seeker under here because I think that's probably a good idea, right? Boop. See what that does. 
Well, I'll just spam these down the hill. See what happens. Okay. Uh, maybe one here as well. I know they're shooting at me. Okay. That is doing absolutely no damage. Scarby is going down there to fight them. Get on. Uh, Val is going to heal me. That is absolutely great initiative. Or you could jump away like an absolute idiot. That's fine. What's the other one? Um, Sunhaven. Sunhaven looks really good. I've never played it. Okay, I'm gonna stand in this cloud of anodyne right here to heal up. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, I'm gonna use my magic staff on them because I spent lots of money on it, and if I don't use it, I'm gonna get really annoyed with myself. Oh, where are they? Down, down south. Uh, we're not doing a huge amount of damage to them down here. He's firing that at me. Nice shot, buddy. Yep, oh, that's also at me. Damn, he hit. <laughs> he landed! Okay. Keep on swapping with my staff. Keeps throwing me off a little bit. Let's just keep on peeking and poking. I think the old peek and poke is, is, is a really good strategy right now. These hellhounds, though, they are cancerous. Oh my god. We don't really have anything that can counter them. Except for maybe six-fold bolt. I'll use this. Alright, where are they? Where is one? Any of them. Boom! Oh, that works so well! Okay, we got one of them down with that skill. Excellent. We'll use another six-fold bolt. I think they attack at the last person who attacked them. Good, I'm being healed. I'll go another six-fold bolt and we'll just wait. Because everybody's also got their weapons out. <laughs> it just jumped off of the ledge. Okay, unfortunately, I can't see anything past this cloud of healing. Fire only urges them on. Yep, good shot, Scarby. Is that everything? Jax has a sword out. No, he's put it away. Excellent. Nice! Good. There is a game I've been replaying recently. I think it'd be awesome to see you play. It's not called There Is No Game, Wrong Dimension. Oh, There Is No Game. Yeah, I've seen that one. That's been on my private list for a wee while. I've just been trying... That was one of the games that I was hoping to play with Yinset, but unfortunately, she's just been so busy that we haven't been able to kind of like sit down and enjoy a game. That? We've been trying... I kid you not. We've been trying to record Doki Doki Literature Club Plus for... For how long? Since last December. Since last December, and since then we've had time to have like two uh, kind of sessions. She's uh, working full time these days, and when she comes home, she, she's also got um, some pretty bad health at the moment based on the stress at work, so she comes home, she's essentially bedridden, which kind of sucks. And I don't really have a lot of time to like talk her into streaming with me either, because it's a high energy thing, and uh, I don't really want to like stimulate her to get even worse than she is. I'm not going to say what she has, because, you know, a lot, it, it's not really relevant. Whoa, that was close. Whoa. But at the same time, there is kind of like, there's stuff going on behind the scenes that I would like to happen. Jax almost one hit that bloody hellhound. Okay, that is not helpful. Let's go ahead and just use the six-fold bolt, I think. Just repeatedly use this over and over again. Ow! They're behind me! They're behind me! Guys! Watch out! Okay, where is it though? There it is. Oh. Okay, that fires ice. That six-fold bolt is actually fantastic. Oh, apparently no one's been using ice against them yet. Scarby just learned a new technique against that foe. Nice! Ah, oh, awesome. I love that. Okay, we've got a skill to one-hit them. That is really handy. Because I haven't played many of those, but it's a really good game. If you really like that one, you might want to give uh, Kyle is Famous a crack. That's probably one of the, fa the funniest voice-acted text adventures I have ever seen. It is so good. It's definitely on par with the genius of uh, Stanley Parable and stuff like that, right? It's very funny. I think Mark Bly played a little bit of the, the first of it, and I tr again, I tried to get Yin set to record some with me as well, but she wanted to see all of the endings by the time we're, we actually got into the meat of the game. Uh, we're going to do a six-fold bolt right here, and it's going to ice this guy. Nice! Awesome. Call me Ice Man. Uh, you guys can take him out now. Excellent, thank you. We'll keep a skill charged up, and just in case there's another one around here, but I don't think there is. No, there is not. Okay. So there is a door right at the end here. I love the Stanley Parable. I think it was written by one of the same guys. Stanley Parable was William Pugh and someone else. And that someone else went on to make the uh, Kyle is Famous. And a bunch of other things, actually. I think they... The Simansky brothers, right? One of them made Iron Lung. But I don't think uh, yeah, Kyle is Famous is really as horror as Iron Lung was supposed to be. Good game, though. bloody good game. Oh, oh this is perfect. This is perfect for a ricochet seeker. We're firing. We're doing it. We're doing a ricochet seeker. Come at us, bro. Nice. Boom. Did that one hit them? It's weird. 
Yep, fire that one straight through the crowd. Okay, now they've come into the close quarters area. Whoops. Stupid! Stupid goblins. Stupid little gobbles. Idiots. Okay. I mean, the spell isn't actually very potent, but my god, is it fun. We want to rank it up. We want to get the next rank because it fires a bunch of different shots. We killed the king with it, though. That's not bad. Okay, now let's start firing a six-fold bolt at that big guy. Jack's already took him out. Uh, everyone, start looting. Get him good. Speaking of Stanley Parable, actually, we're going to play that one on the stream pretty soon. I saw the Stanley Parable had a uh, remake with a bunch of additional content on it. And I've been purposefully avoiding any kind of, like, gameplay on YouTube. Because I know I want to play it. I watched Markiplier play the first one. I see the, I see that guy. Nice. I watched Markiplier play the first Stanley Parable on his channel. And I just... I didn't want to miss out on the joys of experiencing it for myself when I saw the, uh, the Plus game was released. Everyone, go looting. In unison, please. Nice. Thank you. Full Glorious Lord Tome, a Wakestone Shard. Two Wakestone Shards. Okay, we're definitely going to take those... Off of their hands. They are others, I think. All right. Val can give us one of those. And Jax, you can give us the other one so that we can um, consolidate them into one single wake stone. Boom. Nice. Done. Yeah, it's a remake. It's a commentary on remakes. It's great. Awesome. I'm really excited to play it. Why am I not locking on? Oh, probably because I wasn't in contact with them. All right. Jax just absolutely wailed on that guy's uh, stamina. Just drained it straight away. Okay, good. And what is up here? Nothing. Ah, cool. Great. So I don't actually think we can access those doors that are kind of like barred off. I think they're just kind of like decorations. And they are recycling the same arena, which is kind of nice in a sense, because you at least you know where you can hide and such when you are encountering all of these really, really big, rough enemies. Anyone want to grab that giant sack of money? Okay, sure, I got it. Don't worry, it's only 10,000 buckery boos. My god. These guys are so negligent. I can't believe it. I literally cannot believe it. Okay. So, Chamber of Absence. Yeah, we definitely haven't even heard of this one, have we? Although, we got to keep in mind that we can actually take out those Hellhounds with the good old six-fold bolt. That is a really handy skill. I didn't know it did ice damage. Actually, is there a chest over here? No, there is no chest. Except for what's on Funko. Funko knows exactly what's up. Okay, good. Uh, coming around here, we probably want to go up the staircase unless we go into the map and see another door we can go through. Ah, there might be on this side. Let's see. Let's see if there is actually a door on this side. Also, one of these chambers, and I can never remember which, has a lever that opens a secret door. Nope, that's definitely blocked up. Let's just uh, take it on the map right there real quick. Very good. Okay. And backtrack we go. Up here, I think we probably lost all of the materials that were dropped on the ground when we were last here as well. But that is still absolutely fine. I wish there was like a way of knowing exactly where you could go. Because basically how the Everfall works is you just like grab onto random ledges and it's kind of hard to figure out where you are unless you've already been into them. Because you kind of like... The point of this is that you have to get to know exactly what you're looking at every single time. If I go into the map right here. Hmm. There you go. So we can see right here there's a door, but it doesn't actually tell you, other than up here, what you're at or what level you are in the Everfall. So it's kind of one of those instances where you genuinely actually have to know exactly what you're doing. All right, we'll come over here and we'll jump off. Good. And we go in here. Where are we, actually? Let's go into our map. Chamber of Distress. Uh, maybe we don't want to be here. Maybe we don't want to be here. Maybe we don't. Distress doesn't really sound like something we're really interested in, but I'll take the challenge. Oh, but this is a horrible place to be. This is a, a, this is a wombo combo of annoyance. So... What happens here is these harpies that fly around, they're really hard to hit. They knock you down, then the wolves, uh, they eat you while you're on the ground, and they do consistent damage over time until you finish a, a rather tricky quick time event. Now, if these guys drop glacial pinions, we're going to need a lot of them, because I saw something that needs to be upgraded with them. 
Okay, good. Let's get our bow out so we can take out any more of these goddamn harpies. Excellent. There's one. Just gonna fire a bunch of shots at this dickhead right here. Try to knock me down. There we go. I got knocked down. Unsurprising. If we had a wolf here, they would immediately jump on me and then just pin me down. All right, good. We got them both. Because I'm dropping lots of sacks of money. Oh, finally. Someone actually picked up a bit of cash. Wowie. Okay, we're healing up. Excellent. And now we've healed to max. Okay. Ah, would you look at that? Snow harpies. I didn't know. Oh, hello. They're aggroed onto me. <laughs> Why? Why in God's name? Oh my God, they are so annoying to hit. <laughs> they're probably my least favorite enemy in the game. Just because there's actually snow harpies, not so bad. Snow harpies can, can be done pretty reliably simply because they, they have a low health pool, which is good. That's really, really good. What is it really annoying is gargoyles, which are basically harpies, but they've also got a tank amount of damage. And they resist virtually everything that's not physical. So you have to get, like, some kind of physical attack to bring them down from the sky. And if your archer is useless, Scarby's a little bit of a useless archer, you're probably not going to be able to do it. What do you mean? Oh my god, are we actually getting attacked again? So we are. Okay, got him. I think they dropped a wake stone. What's in this chest right here? This is a wake stone shard. Perfect. No, Jax, you cannot have that. No, they did not drop a wake stone. That's fine, actually. We don't mind too much. Okay, we'll go upstairs, just in here. Was there a room off to the side, though? Yes, actually, there is. Okay, we'll go in here first, because there may be something a little bit better for us. Right, good. We'll pop on through this door, and we'll see what we have to deal with. Hopefully, it's a Hydra. Hopefully, it's not a dragon. This place feels like no other... Option. It's a dragon. <laughs> okay, well, technically worm. It technically is a worm. Okay, so let's go for a six-fold bolt, and we'll just fire this over and over again. Good. Now, we've got to be wary of his magic. That did absolutely nothing. Let's try the Ricochet Seeker, which probably, aside from, like, going through him, will not do a lot of damage. What about a Hunter Bolt? Okay, good. Bolt! That did nothing. I think Jax is probably going to carry here. Let's go ahead and grab this Fire Barrel and see what happens. Hopefully he doesn't throw out... A... Oh, God, he's already cast Bolide. Oh, piss. Meteors are literally coming down from the sky. Where, whatever the hell that looks like. Okay, that's Exequi. That's not good. Watch out, Val. Ah, she just ate dirt. That sucks. I think she just tried to heal me. All right, Dragon did a big ground slam. All right, Scarby just got rinsed by the tail. Sucks to be her. Okay, let's try for a, a little bit of magic attack right in the chest. Because like, we do have to hit him in the chest. We actually have to aim with these with these worms here. All right, good, 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 good. Good, we've opened the chest. Go! Go, 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 to party. All right, he's aggroed on me. That's not good. I jumped away from that one. Pretty good. Uh, its arm is currently blocking its chest, which is not the most amazing thing in the world. Let's try for a... Um, Let's try for a, a, a spell, like, maybe Comestion would be a good one. Where are you going, buddy? Do not flick your tail. Oh, he's doing a spell. Excellent. So I can put this right here under his taint. Hilarious. Good. He cast Geisel on himself. That's pretty... And me. That was close. Ooh, very close. Okay, I don't want to attack his leg. What the hell are you guys doing? Oh, my God, Scarby, you are carrying. Good girl. Good girl. Keep on doing that. Nice. Nice shooting, guys. What are you doing? Go. Okay, that's probably for me. Uh, oh, and everyone's dead, except for me. That's actually a, uh, a spell that they have. Now, Vala's going to get herself back up because she is an absolute uh, unit, I guess you could say. And that's her weapon skill. She's not very powerful, but her, her weapon skill is really good. We're on the wrong side of here. We want to be on the other side. Now we want to just uh, fire a bunch of magic right into his chest. Not his arm! What are you doing, Funko? You oof! You oofish twit! Okay, good. Yeah, we can see the heart is unprotected. I think we've actually got to a point now where we're really, really good. Yes, rain steel! Jax, uh, get around the foot. He's blink striking the chest, which is exactly what we want him to do. Okay, good. By the way, all of these uh, pawns right here that we're fighting with, I have made them all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to toot my own horn, but the party is now actually coming together really, really well. This is so chaotic. I know it is, right? 
it's, I feel like it's so much more fun to watch this game as like an archer or maybe a mage. Oh my god, Val died from something. God knows what. Yeah, it's fun to watch this game from a distance uh, because if you are like a warrior or a, or a fighter, you are basically just like always in the fight and you never get to appreciate what the rest of the game is, is doing. All right, that looks like combustion to me. Jack just used a uh, spring water, probably a bit of a waste, but... Actually, that's probably why it's going so well. We've, we've, we've got some healing items. Okay, I'm going to continuously fire at the chest right here because we, the Arisen, need to land the last hit. Okay, we also can't take a single hit. Okay, Jax, get up. This is no time for lazy. He just blinked right to action as well. What the hell? How the hell did he gain another health bar? Whoa, that was close. That was very close. Go, go, Gadget Born Party. Okay, he's still got two health bars left. Let's go ahead and keep on firing away. Now, this guy is a worm, but he's also a frost worm, which means he's got a lot of magical resistance. So we're probably not doing a particularly large amount of damage to him. Damn, Jax just blinked a huge amount of damage to him. Go, go everybody, fire, fire away. Actually, now is probably a really, really good time for a ricochet seeker. Go ahead and fire it because it's in close quarters right here against the wall. And every time it hits a surface, it gains damage. Okay, we'll just spam this for a while until he aggro's onto us. Okay, Scarby's dead. So is Jax. Okay, let's get Jax up first. And then we'll get Scarby up second. Oh, and we could maybe not do that. All right, he's definitely casting Geisel on me. Uh, that was close. We almost bit the dust there. Okay, good. Excellent. All right, let's keep on going. Now, the awesome thing about fighting dragons, there, we got him, is that there is always a chance to dragon forge your gear as well, to get it up to level four. What is it there? Oh, a foot. Oh, and also money. Okay. That's fine. Uh, guys, loot. Loot his corpse. Get his bits. Get his bits off the ground. Get all of those bits that we killed him for. We killed him for all those bits. Okay, I'm taking this wake stone. You guys want to take anything else? No? We've got 16 wake stones in storage. Let's go ahead and see how many we have in our pocket. Not from there, though. From here. We have... I've got an acid sack for the first time as well. We have five in our pocket, so we have one more than we need. We're going to need another, like, four of them or so, because in the next game, we're probably going to really need them. Ah, I'll pick them up. Fine. Okay, good. Bunch of materials. Got two more wake stones out of that. And a lot of azure dragon scales. Nice. Did we loot that chest? Yes, we did. Of course we did. Why would we not have? Can't go through there. Nothing over there. All right, this place is completely 100%ed. What was that? Oh, it was us. I was looking at the shadows and I was thinking, oh no, is that another dragon? It was not. It's fun, isn't it? This is such a cool game. There's always two kinds of people, right? There are two kinds of people. There are the kinds of people who will always, for the end of time, sing this game's praises and say, it is the best RPG ever made. Like, ever made, hands down, no exception. Oh, I think all of these harpies respawned. And then the other half of the gamers uh, are all like, oh, I haven't played that yet. <laughs> you know, those who, those who have played it, those who haven't. Okay, we've got a dog here. We probably should just fire a ricochet arrow. These guys are flimsy as hell. This, they're like Timu uh, wolves. The Hellhounds, they were actually a threat. Okay, good. Got that one down and dusted. Let's go ahead and fire a ricochet seeker into the doorway right here. Because that's going to really bother these doggos. Is that it? Okay, they're healing up. That's pretty good. We've got full health as well, which is pretty awesome too. Okay, there's nothing in there. We're going to have to go and chase this dog down because it's, it's cowering away. It is literally Dead cowering master. from us. No harpies. No harpies. Dead master. Dead no harpies. I don't want to be hit by this. No harpy. Hell, there's no harpies. Diable. Are you guys just shouting about... Oh, I see. Okay. He's howling. I don't think he's got any friends, though. And he's dead. <laughs> he just ran off the ledge. It was like, I'm not taking that on. He fancied his odds when he uh, outnumbered us like four to one. But now nah, he's like, oh, don't fancy this. Let's okay, let's open this. What is it? Balmy incense. Okay, that's fine. Can't get into that room there, which is a bit of a shame. Okay. 
So around here, there might be a chest over this way. There is a chest. Good. We are rewarded for our exploration. What is it? A wakestone shard. We're rewarded in mass. Awesome. Love that. Love that for us. And there's another chest right over there. I'm just going to tell everyone else to go. Because we got tiny legs. We have literally gimped ourselves, by the way. Our character is about as useless as a character can get. Zero health. Zero armor. Really short, so his movement speed is incredibly low. And also really wide. So he's slow. He, he runs real slow. He's got a high weight, low height. Okay, we'll come down here and we're also going to jump off the sledge. Uh, aside from that, though, we've actually given ourselves a bunch of other perks. For example, the staff is just fantastic for levitation. I don't even think we want to use it for anything other than navigation. Yo, it's me! What? Four foot tall with a giant moustache and short man syndrome. Is that, is that really who you are? <laughs> Funko is a tiny man. In the cutscenes, he's like at the bottom of the screen. Okay, good. Like, if I if I were to show you, if I blow myself up here, all of the cutscenes, Funko is like, he's like, he's like down here, and he's like, he's, he's interacting with the world as he goes on, but he's like this tall in retrospect, and usually there's some kind of geometry down here that just blocks him out entirely, which is really funny. Ugh. That was a nice squat. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for that squat. All right, let's go back down here, and we will jump further into the Everfall. We could take on the Ur-Dragon, but he's a penis. He's an actual penis. I don't think I like him that much. That's incredible. I know, it's so funny. I've never played as, like, a super short character before. This was my first time. Worth it. 100% worth it. Okay. What is this? Let's see. Well, let's roll the dice. What are we looking at? Uh, this looks like the Ur-Dragon's one to me. I'm hoping it is. What's in what here? Is this, place? this is the Chamber of Hesitation, Scarby. Oh, this is where all the Saurians are. Oh, well. Sucks to be them. Let's go ahead and just start firing away at them. Six-fold bolt right here. Does it one-hit him? Almost. Okay. Firing another. The oh, my God. Poor guy. I'm literally stun-logging him. Oh, poor bastard. Okay, let's pick the, all of these guys off from range. I think that's going to be the way. Okay, good. Missed. Wasted my stamina with that one. Fire that one right there. And now... Okay, missed that one as well. And I'm really tired. Everyone's rushing to my aid. Perfect. Are you all right, master? Oh, no, there's one up there. I auto-attacked on him. That's not good. Good thing I moved, though. If I didn't move, we'd be in a real bad spot. Uh, attack his tail. What are you doing, Funko? Not the body, you oaf. Yes, good. Okay, good. Now beat him to death with your star. Yes, precisely. Oh, wait, don't shout. Profit. Good. Uh, let's try for the the base attack. Stop swinging your goddamn staff, Funko. Let's try for the, the basic attack here. Okay, good. I think we'll aim for their tail if we can, but I won't be too annoyed if we can't. Okay, landed two on there. Sorry, and Sage, is that who they are? Oh, well, not for long. Okay, knock its tail off if we can, because that's the source of all of their power. Excellent. Now Jax is going to hold him down. Scarby's wailing on him. Perfect. Love it. What is this? Purpure Crystal? Don't know what that does. Thanks, though. Thank you. Thank you, game. Really? Oh, my God, you are so right. They come out of nowhere. They sit on the walls and they're invisible. Okay, good. I knocked his tail off. Let's go ahead and continue attacking him. Go, everybody! Annihilate that thing! Nice! Poor bastard. Poor bastard. What the hell? Jax just used a empty flask. Did he have to pee or something? Fair enough. He's, probably, he's, got, a, he's got a bottle of urine in his pocket right now. Right, what is it? Wakestone shard. Okay, thank you very much. That's for me. I am going to fire off a series of ricochet seekers in here because it is kind of overpowered in this tiny enclosed space. Good. Let's continue onwards. We'll fire it into that wall right there so he gets absolutely rinsed. Yeah, what is it? Cheese? Is the technique cheese? Go! What are you waiting for? I'm, I'm the archer! Why are, you, why are you guys waiting? Okay, I'm going to find another one of those in there. And it's not doing a huge amount of good, but we are knocking their tails off with it, which is just like, 
Okay, we're tired. Yeah, it's pure cute. profit. Oh no, they're all aggroed on me. Uh, oh no. Don't spit on me. What the hell was that? What is, I've never seen that attack before in my life. Crazy. Okay, so we got him down. Scarby's learning so much stuff about these guys. Oh, hello. No. No, don't do that, please. Okay, maybe I am gonna go for his tail from between his legs. Now that is how somebody shoots. I don't know what that does. I don't know if he's healing or what. Uh, let's try the six-fold bolt. That was really, really good against him before. And he's not aggressing us. Okay, good. And let's try for the tail this time. Uh, yep, all of those are locking on. Good. What are you guys doing? Attack! You oafs? Okay, good. Fire on his tail. All of those. We actually missed tail. initially. Okay, thanks, Jax. Good. Jax is going to serve his bait with his gigantically deep voice. Okay, so the tail is severed. Excellent. Now we can go in and close in for the kill. Jax, do a blink strike or something. Yep, someone just face tanked a uh, piece of spit. Was it just water? Oh, perfect. Wakestone shard. Nice. Uh, I think there's more of them as well. Okay, let's loot everything. Guys, what are you doing? Giant coin pouch? Yeah, I'll take that, sure. What else is there? There's also this small coin pouch and also snowy saurian skin. Uh, there's more snowy saurians as well. Let's go ahead and get out our ricochet seekers. And we're going to fire it right at this wall right here. Boop. A little bit of a cheeky wee boop right there. Maybe we fire it right at their feet, see what happens. Okay, good. They're guarding, which is not really going to save them from the tail attacks. Nice. Uh, we can do a six ball bolt right here. Beautiful. We knocked off the tail. Now let's go ahead and continue on attacking. Good on you, Jax. Okay, good. He's quite upset with us, I think, this uh, Saurian right here. But he's burning to death, so honestly, I don't really care what he has to say. Now there is another path in front of us here. I don't know if this leads to Ur Dragon or not, but we are going to find out. So I think someone just threw a pot at the wall as well. Okay, let's hope that this is not actually Ur Dragon. No, it's not. Okay, Chamber of Hesitation. Oh, Hydra! Okay. Yeah, it's sure. I'd love to. Uh, let's go ahead and use a Hunter Bolt to take out all of these undead, because I'm pretty sure we can one-hit them. Oh, almost one-hit. Good. And now we fire these ones off. Uh, let's just use our, our bow now. I'll grab hold of it. Whoops. One, two, three over here as well. He needs to go. I'm not going to waste another one of those shots on him, especially if we don't have to. I just are really fun to fight, by the way. I quite like them. And there's also an undead warrior here. I'm going to get rid of them simply because they're kind of annoying to be in the fight anyway. I'm going to pick up all of their crap too because I want it. It's my birthday and I want it. That was the worst uh, Smeagol impression I've ever done. Quite frankly. Okay, good. Let's try for... Let's try for six volt bolt from a distance. I mean, what, what's the worst? Oh my god, that is potent. Yes, I like this. Does it get more powerful? No, it does not. Okay, good. Excellent. All of those are landing. Scarby is already getting up on top of them, getting busy with their necks. Yes, you will. Yes, you damn well will, Scarby. Oh god. I'm gonna sneeze. I'm gonna sneeze really, really soon. While this giant Hydra does, and Jax is literally like hanging onto his head for dear life. Oh my god, good work, Jax. Uh, Jax just got eight. Actually, let's let's help Jax. I think his neck got in the way. Okay, good, we released Jax. Perfect. Oh my god, someone just did a huge amount of damage to that Hydra. Uh, we'll try for the Hunter Bolt. That might be better. Whoa, we painted him. What is that? Is th that's not very good, actually. Damage? Damage check? No, that's not good. It's more of a crowd control thing, I think. Okay, let's try for some magic, I think. Maybe Ingle? We'll try for a high Ingle, and we'll go into targeting mode instead of, like, lock-on mode. Boom. Oh, nice! I lit that head on fire, which is fantastic. So, the benefit of that is that they really struggle to regenerate their heads if you cauterize the, the wounds. Like so. Oh, I missed one. Okay, we'll try for another high angle right here. I'm gonna go for this far one. Boom! Well, it looks like so is everybody. I'm really tired. Oh no, 
no. <laughs> he one hit me. <laughs> okay, we'll use a wake stone because these are tough fights and you do get a lot of resources out of them. Yes. Climb its neck and strike. Do that, Jax. Okay, I'm going to focus on that one. Nice. I took off an entire head. Jax is trying not to be eaten. What an oath. That was a weird arrow shot, that one. It just, like, it, it went in a huge arc to, to hit the head. A bit unnecessary. All right, guys. Go. Go. Attack. Okay, we're going to try for the Sixfold Bolt. I think Sixfold might be really, really good against him. Yeah, because it knocks off the hit, which deals a lot of bonus damage to the health bar. Okay, we'll see how many it takes. Oh, nice. One of the hits just went off. I think I unfortunately missed a shot because of it, though. Alright, no, go. Yes, perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and fire that one as well. Excellent-ish. Almost... Almost had it. All right, good. All of those are uh, locking onto their neck. Let's go ahead and just keep on firing away. Wow, that that one neck that I cauterized ages ago is still burning. Okay, good. Never mind. The head is coming back. The head has come. Okay, good. I have... I think I just drained the stamina of one of these things, which is hilarious because it took all of my stamina to, to do that too. So if we're laying here... And that guy throws some venom at us. We're screwed. He did not, though. That's lucky. All right, let's get the small coin pouch. I'll look around the battlefield for Wakestone shards. Because there may be some. Okay, there aren't any. Good. Let's just keep on firing these consistent shots at them. Because it seems like this is probably the best one to stimulate the head to get knocked off. Whoa, that was close. Val just absolutely bit the dust. But fortunately, Val is about to get herself back up. Oh! Gross! Climb the neck. Oh, Val just got a real bad hand, unfortunately. Okay, let's start firing at this guy's head. Scarby is actually climbing. Oh, that's what I want to see. That's exactly what I want to see. We want to see Scarby climbing. That's exactly what we want to build her into. Right, beautiful. beautiful. Go, Scarby. Go, go, Gadget, Scarby. Yeah, you do that. Uh, watch out for that gigantic beam of poison, Val. Oh, my God. <laughs> she keeps getting absolutely wasted. I wonder how toxic it would be to have three pawns with the um, the Legion's Might equipped. Because that's the item that allows them to resurrect. That's exactly what we're using on Val to get her to resurrect herself. Which only really saves us a short run over to her. All-consuming flames! Good timing for all-consuming flames, guys. Go on, quarterize that neck before her head grows back. Good. Uh, you missed. You, you missed, Val. That's not good. All right, Scarby is actually about to lop off another head. What do you mean you can't take much more? You are clumsy. What do you mean? You are literally on its head. Cleave it. Cleave it from its neck. Go, Scarby. I believe in you. You're a super. You're a superpower. Go, Queen. <laughs> or not. Nice. Okay, she finally. Nope. No, I got that one. <laughs> Scarby did not. Oh, I see. Scarby is now being eaten. I wonder how she lost such an advantage. She went from literally being at its throat with a couple of very overpowered daggers to, uh, hey, I'm being eaten. What is going on here? Oh, Jax is being eaten now. Okay, I'm going to fire away at this one. So Jax is back in the fight. Because I think he's definitely a damage dealer. Yeah, there we go. So Jax is now free. Let's go ahead and continue just firing here. Val is down. Who gives a hoot? She's also only level 65, which is pretty funny as well. Right, let's go ahead and continue fighting these wankers here. Nice. And this one's probably going to go too. We've got it down to its last health bar as well. So it's about to die. I am just kind of like on the outskirts, kind of picking and poking at the damage. Okay, good. So Val is about to cast fire, which is probably going to lock off the head. Never mind, that was me that did that. Scarby's getting eaten. That's funny. And it's down. Done. It was literally Val's basic attack that took him down. Okay, let's go all the way over here. Jump over this creature right here. I see uh, some wake stones might be available to be picked up right here. Please? Can I not cross this? Can I not cross the snake's tail? Ow. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, what about you guys? Can you go through the snake? I'll have a look around. Very well. 
Oh, I wonder if the chests have respawned. Nope, that's the doorway. All right, here we are. A lot of good shit here. A lot of good shit. Sorry, I forgot uh, that I don't cuss on stream. <laughs> Just a split second of swearing there. We'll take all of this. This is actually, this should be everything. This should be literally everything. Uh, what do we got? Okay, let's look at our tools. We got 10. That is beautiful. So we've got 26 in total, and that's not including whatever everyone else has picked up. Let's use this fairy stone to go all the way back up to green searing. And we now have enough stones to finally finish off this playthrough. I am so excited. I am so goddamn excited. Okay, we'll come in here. We'll go ahead and deposit everything because we are going to need a weightless character very shortly. Nice! Managed sword art. I love the monster designs. I know, they're so cool, aren't they? They are so, so very cool. What about the, like, pawn combat? Are you, are you already in love with that? Because it is very awesome. This game, like, every single little touch that Capcom has stuck into this game has been god tier. And it has, it, it is an old game, so, not gonna lie. Like, it's been out for a while. And I think Capcom are kind of like, today? they definitely learn from their mistakes, I feel. So we want to withdraw enough wake stones under the tools. What the hell is this new weapon? Direwolf bow. Yuck. Okay, so we've got 16, we've got 10 on us. We want another... 11. We'll go for 11 just in case we die in the post-game stuff. Alright, we're about to see the end of the story. The climax, if you will. Or well, the second climax, because usually every story has like a first climax and then a second climax. It's, it's very common, very common in film. Okay, we'll come all the way through here and we are going to fire down into the depths. Prepare yourself for grueling battle. Okay, we are about to kill a god. We're about to kill a god. I'll pause the music. We'll come down here and we want to hit the first exit we can right here. Boop. Oh, damn it, we missed it. No, we didn't. Excellent. So right here, is it here? No, actually we went way too far. We actually didn't even want to go over the ledge whatsoever. It, it was back up there. So we're gonna go all the way to the bottom of the Everfall. We're going to spawn in a completely different universe. This is cool though, isn't it? This is such a cool mechanic. You don't see it like this anymore. All right, we wanna, we wanna get back to this top ledge right here. Boop. We almost just bit that. We almost just landed on our Hello. head. Hi, Quince. Yes, at last. At last you've gathered the whole of them. I have. With them, you can summon forth a rift of considerable power. For what purpose? This rift, born of the Wakestone's power, will guide you forward, Arisen. But I'm in a world. I fear there will be no returning to this place. Are you prepared to journey on? Hell yeah, I am. End this, Arisen. May the world be put right by your hand. Okay, here are all those wake stones being applied. And again, re I'm really sorry that music can't be enabled. People are making false copyright strikes about um, in-game cutscenes and stuff in, uh, in Dragon's Dogma. And there's nothing we can do about it. There's literally nothing we can do about it. Because as soon as one of those um, companies, they're, ju they're just individuals who are trying to redirect revenue. As soon as one of those uh, people kind of like gets banned on YouTube, they just start up another channel. It's an epidemic. It's literally an epidemic. All right, so we've done it. Now, this should be the last. We'll jump off here and we are entering the final universe. Here we go. Ooh! Okay, we canceled a, I, I just got freedom, escape the yoke of eternity. So this guy right here is a, I'll just cover the mini map. It doesn't really matter because we're pretty much past the mini map point now. This is, the center of the world. This is the guardian of structure. The YouTube copyright system is so bad. I know, it's pretty bad, eh? I'll not waste time on rhetoric. Defeat me and take my place as keeper of this world. You saw it awaiting you at the end of your descent. Aye, the same world you've traveled to arrive at this place. A world you may well now inherit. Woo! It is a simple proposition. No different than any you faced. This guy is literally God. To claim what is offered you. The will 
to survive. Okay, let's kill God. <laughs> let's kill God, and we'll also spit in his face. Oh. Show you fighting coming. Oh no, I remember this. We don't want to kill him. Yet. Okay, I'll wait for him to pop his second ult. There it goes. And now I, I pick him up. I pick him up. I grab God. <laughs> Just grab God right in the jubblies. That alone has brought you here. So the trick is really just to keep on moving sideways. Where'd he go? Sorry. Where'd he go? He's got the highest voice in the game, Funko. Consider the infinite potential. What's up with the amorphous blob? Oh my god, you're undulant as me! Just as you call forth forms, so I command all life into existence. Call it divine creation if you must, <laughs> but expect none of the mercy men seek in their gods. This is cold truth, the unbending reality of a world without compassion. <laughs> the world and all its denizens are but empty vessels. In that regard, no different than the forms. Without volition, there is no true life. The world falls stagnant, dead as an ocean with no current to guide it. That volition is tempered by the struggle for survival. The decision, just like yours, to fight. Just as the forms need a master's command, so the world thirsts for the will to live. I should also probably point out this game is uh, this game is for really smart people. <laughs> I love stories where you fight God. I know, but like, here's the thing: like, God is rationalizing. Okay. Bad timing. Okay, we can't kill God. Struggle now and cling to life. Cling to life. Show that living holds worth enough to fight for. Cutscenes that go hard. This one is right up there. Yeah, it does go crazy with our character, doesn't it? You're so right, Overdrive 19. Here we go. It is I. It was I all along. We. We're the sun that the earth revolves around. Isn't that awesome? That is actually the story, by the way. Will you claim your right as a risen? Or shrug the burden and seek peace in oblivion? Okay, we've got a choice here. We've got a choice. Just so. One foot after the next, come what may. That is what it means to live. So, the reason they call us the Arisen is because we ascend to Godhood. Like Talos. Oh god, I love this story! I love this story so much! This game always lives rent-free in my heart, and always will. It's such a cool goddamn story. Step forward or retreat. Accept the quiet emptiness of a false peace. A false life. Oh, okay, so we go ahead here. We ascend to Godhood, which is our destiny as arisen. That is the pure function of this world. This world only exists for us to serve as a proving ground to prove that we are worthy of Godhood. Isn't that insane? Or we can go back and live our lives the as a simple fisherman. Peace. That too is a valid fate. Let's choose peace first. Excuse me. I've never done this before, by the way. I've never just gone back. I know you can. I've never done it. Ah, oh, okay. Right. So here we are, back where we started the game when the dragon attacked. With everything being undone. Ah, okay.
Okay, so everything is undone, right? Now, we did pick up something rather important. This little tool right here, everybody knows as the exploit item, but basically what it does is it kills you. <laughs> An almighty divine blade received along with your returned heart has the power to guide the chosen to true freedom. So what this insinuates is that we're always going to be captive in the game as a character, right? Like we as the player can just leave the game. We, we can just go outside, touch some grass. But here, the character is stuck within the confines of their world. So this here is the true... This here is the release. This here is freedom. No, I don't want to use a wake stone. That's the bad ending, essentially. That is, that is essentially what is the bad ending. Now, here we are. We're back at the Chamber of Choice. Then you would choose peace. No, I'm not choosing peace. I came back to hurt you. <laughs> Look at how he wiggles. <laughs> he looks so stupid. Taking those bolts of magic right to the face. What an oaf. Okay, we'll go ahead. We'll ascend to godliness. We'll get our bow out because we actually do have to take these guys out. They're all going to attack us because none of these guys want us to ascend. Put an end to it. The praises of the quiet life are sung far too infrequent. Nope. Not happening, buddy. Nice try. All right, he did a bow. That was weird of him. Okay. What a weird fury of a man. Ow! <laughs> That's a might harsh, eh? Ever the noble one, you. <laughs> So none of these people were ever real. Not a single one of them. These are all the people that we came across in our time, by the way. There none of them were real. From my words now. All right, they're celebrated in the Dragon voice, Forge. But your own. They died as they lived. Irrelevant. Here's Mercedes. You're not without a home to return to. Why? <laughs> what is it drives you so? I spanked her in the ass with my staff. All right, I'm not going to feel bad about killing the Duke right here. And Festus. My, my. <laughs> this too great an honor for one of my stature. Killed by a god. That is a pretty good death. And here's Julian. Why he picked the wrong side. Sir? You've ought to protect, do you not? No. This, here you go. Smack him in the balls. This is your answer, then. Here's the Duke's soul. Uh. Uh. I'm just going to kill them all with the staff. Hello there, idiot. This guy died an idiot's death. <laughs> I would beg you rest a while yet, but just as like you would turn a deaf ear. Instead, I ask only that you keep us in mind now and again. So he knows we're going to kill him. This is the chief of uh, Cassidus. is Madeline. And of course the princess. We tried to bugger the princess, but it didn't quite work out. Goodbye. Bye bye. I was always so afraid. You seemed never like to leave for somewhere I could not follow. All right, this was our, supposed to be like our childhood best friend here. Me and the side of those I loved. Only ever asked. So what these uh po these people here essentially they were people NPCs. What they wanted was just heaven, but there was no such thing. And of course, the last one until we ascend to godliness. Our beloved. It was actually an absolute oaf. He's getting ready for us for a scrap though. Oh well, I'll hit him in the knees. Bye bye. Okay, I'm not even watch him die. I'm off. <laughs> I felt nothing for that character, by the way. I don't know why he became our beloved. All right, here we go. The ascension begins. Oh, this story is so... It gets even cooler as well. Like, if you can believe it, it gets cooler. You are close now. So very close to me. Come, Arisen. Uh. I shall meet you on your own terms, joined by my own companions of old. This right here. Stand now at its end, Arisen. See your journey through. This is the Seneschal. So he's basically the gatekeeper to godliness. Oh my god, Scarby just got massively railed. Okay, so we got to take out his pawn first. Uh, this guy has to go. 
Two rangers. Okay, maybe this wasn't the smartest idea in the world. All right, that's one of them. That's the pawn down. And here we go. Here's the last one. Why? Oh, yeah, good shot. I think I... <laughs> I put my staff in his balls and just tapped him. He was like, oh! You have killed God! Sick. Arisen, forgive me. All I've done is to test your will. It is the fate of all Arisen. You and I are swept up in the current, same as the rest. Each tempers the volition of the next. And the endless cycle continues. So short! <laughs> He's so tiny! And so, until the coming of a new soul fit to craft the will to live, someone like you. Until that day, may you guide the world ever justly. I remember how I was mentioning that dagger, by the way? The the God's Bane, the exploit weapon that we used to kill ourselves on the beach? This is the only weapon in the world that can kill a god. I present you with the God's Bane blade. Those who arise to oversee this world are undying, save by this brand's kiss. I, l I love how they always say that death is just a mercy in some way. They never say it's like something to be afraid of. They say it's it's something to to rest the weary eyes of, of God. You, as the world's new cynical, use it now to vouchsafe freedom to your weary servant. Even we who traverse the rift do not ken what lies beyond. Yep, you and you'll never see it. Grant me now this single boon. The fire of my life is spent in guttering. Give me freedom with the kiss of the God's Bane Blade. If there is aught you wish to know for my death, you need but ask. Yeah, I've got questions. My knowledge, as my all, is yours to take. What would you hear of me? What the hell is a Seneschal? The Seneschal is steward to the world. The world you traveled now rests in your care. Just as the Arisen calls Pawn into being and sets them to motion, the Seneschal holds dominion over all living things. There are those who would call such a being Maker or God. I cannot deny the claim any more than affirm it. In the end, they are but words. Call it what you will. Such is the office I have served. Just as those before me and you beyond to eternity. Mm. So there's always this repeating theme uh, that we quite uh, frequently see, and also in the Everfall, where time is just a loop, and when you reach the bottom of the Everfall, you just fall into another universe. Your time keeps progressing until you use the God's Bane. Otherwise, it is just an endless loop. Oh, I want more. If there is I got more. I got more questions. How is the world own. composed? The pawns exist astride the rift. They speak of a multitude of worlds, each infinite unto itself, limitless in span and lost to time. These worlds extend in an eternal, perfect loop. Just as a ring lacks start and end, so this world has no origin, no final terminus. If it does, they lie beyond our care. It can't. That is the inherent property of time, that it can never actually end. Time will progress even if this planet literally atomizes into dust, time will still progress. We are prisoners of unpassing time, wandering an unending land. What lies beyond, we cannot know. It feels different. New crown sovereign. If okay, good. Uh, let's go ahead and what is eternity? There is life in the world and with it death. Not lasts forever. Each rises and falls in its time. But such is a death akin to that of ponds appear in this world and vanish only to appear again like bubbles in a mountain spring 
As so it is with all that lives within this eternal world. In time, you will come to see it happen under your watch, Asinisha. Each beast, each blade of grass, each human life is born to die and be born again in endless rhythm. Yeah, so that's what they're talking about, where, where time essentially loops. So, the current state that you watch, you literally watching this video right now at home, you watching this live stream, you watching this video, you will be in this exact same situation for an internet, an infinite potential of times, right? Because if time has no end, then there is infinitely the possibility for this world to be destroyed, remade as it exactly was, with the sun rotating exactly as it is, you coming to the same life circumstances that ended up at my channel. You're always going to end up at my channel. That is inherently the whole point of time. We only gauge time by the sun. And if the sun ends, the sun inherently has to be there again at some point because time is infinite. It's statistically unlikely uh, to ever be seen in kind of like any kind of way, shape or form that our third dimensional monkey meat brain would ever comprehend. But at the same time, like fourth dimensions, that's how it works. Time is just endless. It, it, it keeps on going and there is no end. Everything that has happened must happen again at some point. For example, uh, quite frankly, World War II, probably going to happen again. Uh, Hitler will probably have a different moustache when it happens again, but there's also the equal potential for it to happen again with the same little moustache between his nose. Like, that's, it's, it's just a, a fact of time and space. It's, it's one of those things that once you kind of, like, look beyond the constraints that are time, you start to realise everything is temporary, but also at the same time, in terms of time, everything's permanent. I don't know if I'm articulating myself very well, but really, really smart people will hear this and they'll be all like, quantum theoretics, yep. That's that's pretty pretty good way of putting it into a video game as a plot. Like, it's genius. It's absolutely genius how this game has done it. Not lasts forever. Yet all persists unto eternity. Literally what I just... That was my last sentence before I started blowing Capcom. New all right, one more. One more question. If there is aught you my knowledge. What is will? Will is that which led you to this place, and that which turns the eternal wheel of the world. Along the endless string of life and death, there are some born with a hunger. They yearn for some other, better place. They are the arisen, nascent fountainheads of will. Now, again, I'm going to go off on a, a bit of a rant about this. I don't think that when they say will, they actually mean willpower. I, I don't think that's um, that's it whatsoever. I think it's more purpose. I, th I think purpose is probably what they meant more than, than will. Because without purpose, the NPC that we play as would be very, very happy just to uh, go their entire life if it existed. It can't exist without us literally firing the game up. And there's no way in hell we're going to spend 30 years in this game fishing and going to bed on time and all of that crap, right? So, when it really boils down to it, we are the willpower that perpetuates the cycle. Because we are the consistent theme. And you'll also see that very, very shortly, because it's a, uh, it, it's, even that's a plot point. Time's a concept that feels like it's overused in media, that it is so underused because of the amount of untapped potential it has, which is barely explored by modern media about time. Yeah, definitely. Like, you can definitely look into um, time, you can look at research papers, you can look at theoretics, but at the end of the day... Every single thing that is in this world could potentially happen. Like, there is going to be one day in place of this world spinning around the sun. There is going to be a world made of glass, and that is going to be absolutely garbage because someone's going to go and try and explore uh, something in the solar system, and they're going to crash into it because they couldn't see it. <laughs> like, there is equal potential for that to eventually happen forward or back in time. It's just not happening now in the present. So present is what we construct time as, right? There is no other concept of time other than right now, in this present, at the second. Because when we look at time as a concept, we cannot see far back enough to know all of the infinite potentials that we uh, have missed, and we can't look forward at all because we are third-dimensional beings and we just, we just don't have that kind of um, corporeal transcendence, I suppose you could call it. We, we, we're in a meat suit. We're in a suit of meat, and thus we have to adhere to the presence of time. It's, it's, it's a shame, but there's, there's no escaping it. And so the dragon is sent into the world to guide the Arisen and refine them, 
to temper their wills into ought capable of sustaining the world. Yeah, this is what I mean by like uh, willpower actually being purpose. So the game gives us purpose to play the game. There is motivation. There's the dragon. Like that's exactly what you come across right at the start of the game. It's just here's a dragon. Go fight it. And also your entire purpose in life is to kill it. And, uh, you know, most gamers will be all like, okay, well, looks like we're going to gear up. We're, we're going to go on a bunch of adventures. We're going to go fight a dragon. There's going to be no players who are going to fire up this game and see that giant dragon on the screen and then think, oh, you know what? I'm probably actually just happy um, role-playing as a fisherman for the next 30 years <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> like, it's daft. It's daft to think about that, right? Like, you, you have the purpose. And if you don't, like, at least work towards that purpose, then you are missing the entire point of the game, which is to be played. So, willpower, purpose, you could also call it just, like, story narrative. You perpetuate the story narrative by playing the game, you advance the story. Without you, the story doesn't advance. Without you, the rapture never happens, the sky never falls out of the world, and all that stuff. And uh, that is the whole point of the dragon. The dragon is literally there as a MacGuffin motivation to get you to ascend to godliness and finish this iteration of the cycle. And so the cycle of our world has air continued. Nice. This place is familiar. Okay, this good. We are now going to grant him a boon. Let's wield the God's Bane blade and give this man sweet, sweet release. For I welcome the release. I'm on nothing. At long last, I am free of eternity, of infinity. Free of the cruel, unending ring. It's also really cool, because this is exactly what would happen. Mercy, we dealt the blow of deliverance. I just got the uh, Chivo for it right there in the corner. Oops, that's the wrong button. It's really cool, because Capcom also took into consideration what somebody who would have had to have lived for potentially millions of years what they would be thinking which is i'm looking from this at this world from above i'm making sure that it's all put together without me this world just ends like flat out right and then as soon as they get uh, somebody to replace them which is now us they get the mercy of death which is in that case a mercy damn it's empty hey scarby what do you think I'm gonna sit on this throne right here Look down at the world a little bit. So this is the Seneschal. He's an invisible, all, well, they are invisible, all-seeing, uh, technically have no gender because they're not corporeal anymore. We can't talk to anybody. We run through everybody. Isn't that crazy? So we can do whatever we want in this world now. Unfortunately, there is nothing we can do in this world anymore. That's it. The story's over. We can oversee Cassidus. That's about it. And then we go back here every single time. Now, there is one thing that we can do up here. There's nothing else that we can really do up here. Uh, there's, I've scoured this place for secrets several times. I've scoured Cassidus for secrets several times. There's literally nothing. You can't interact with any objects. You can't spook anybody. You can't harass anybody. But there is one thing that you can do. You can go into your tools. And you can wield the God's Bane. Now, Scarby is standing right behind us, right? She is standing right behind us, and uh, she basically stands at our side for the rest of eternity, much like the Seneschal's pawn stood beside him when we fought him. So if we use this here, God's Bane Blade... Open your eyes. This is, is going to be a little bit heartbreaking, by the way. Really, like, prepare tissues, kind of heartbreaking. Now, her one purpose in life was to protect the Arisen. She just failed that.
all of the infinite universes of herself and are blending into one. By the way, this is where the story gets really wacky. Like I said, it gets better. I said it gets better. This is where it gets better. Master! The pawn becomes the new arisen. Filled with determination. To see the next quest through. This is as it always was, by the way. Every new game plus that you play. Oh, he was supposed to be our beloved. look on his face <laughs> what the hell the poor now lives in the body of the dead arisen that's how that works and the arisen okay you feel an odd pride as you play okay guess i'll see that later and thus the story is not over the story is actually not over so if we hit New Game Plus, we then go into our pawn's body. So what happened there was all of the all of the infinite universe's iterations of that pawn all blended into that one body, and as they both fell into the ocean, she fell into the Arisen's body and was resurrected. So we play as the pawn every single time. And in New Game Plus, you can always do another New Game Plus. So when you finish that next New Game Plus, you play as that pawn. Here we go, Funko, also known as Fanny. Level 76 Magic Archer. In 5.2 million buckery boos, this is Scarby, also known as Quee Quig. She is a Skay the Pioneer. She obeys, and uh, she's had some pretty good ratings. Isn't that sick? God, I love this game so much. It's so, so cool. And I don't really want to spoil anything. But Dragon's Dogma 2's story is just as awesome with so many... It also has a lot of little twists and turns. And it, it's... A <laughs> Val, the support pawn. She looks like she's riding an imaginary Harley, but she's not. <laughs> she's got five stars and everything, though. That's pretty good. It's pretty good indeed. I'll get on the other side so we can look at the, uh, the credits. So... Oh my god, it's, it's just so cool. It's just so goddamn cool. So what the story is, is not, hey, here's a dragon. Go kill it. Here's Jax, mitigator pioneer. Uh, it's pretty OP, actually. Gotta be said. I don't know why his appearance rating is, is so low. Probably because of the helmet. You always play as the pawn. You always play as the pawn. Even when we fired up that first game, we were playing as the previous uh, Arisen's pawn. Because we had the intro scene where the guy was... I. I think that was the Duke. I think the Duke was supposed to be fighting the dragon, but that could have also been the previous uh, Arisen. That could have been the Seneschal before he arose into the godliness. I doubt it, though. I do doubt that. I do think he is the Duke instead that we play as in the prologue, simply because the Duke actually made a bargain. He looks very similar. He's got the same hair color, same facial structure, just looks older as the Duke. And on top of that, the dragon's still alive. So, you know, such is life. Now, <laughs> Gobble the <God. laughs> He's got five stars and everything. He's doing better than Jax. He's also doing like a whip. He's doing one of those things. What an asshole. What an actual asshole. I love this so much. This, it's so cool. It's so goddamn cool. Now. There are a few playthroughs that we are going to be doing now. One is going to be a 100% run to get every single quest. We're going to get, uh, not all the items. That's just a, a, a real bad, that's like a sans level of bad time. We are going to get uh, basically all the quests in one run and we're going to save Fornival. And then we're going to go into Bitter Black Isle, which is the free DLC that was uploaded for Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen after the game was released about a year later. And it's about as big as half the game. It is a big DLC. It's also got its own plot points and it's got a bunch of other stuff that we can kind of uh, go and explore. There's a bunch more lore that we can go and look at. There's an, actual, there's an actual Arisen in there who... I don't know quite how he got this way, but he... I think he became so full of hatred out of uh, some event. 
I think it was losing his beloved, that he started to become a dragon himself. And that is the boss. That is the, that is the boss of the DLC. God, I love this so much. I, I can't say just how much I love this game. All right. Uh, just in case I missed anything in summary... Porn fell into the Arisen's body. The Porn is no longer active in any other universe. All of those have blended into one body. So the Arisen is now localized on your computer as one entity. You, the player, play that Arisen. No one else gets to play that Arisen. No one else gets to see that Arisen in their world because they are not going to the other multiple universes. And to have anticipated that before even releasing the game is a huge W on, on, on Capcom's part. Right, even if two play people played the game, only two people played the game, the concept will still stand. It's very cool. And yet, here we are with the absolute cult classic, genius level of storytelling, genius level of RPG mechanics as well. My God, I love this so much. <sighs> okay, let's skip these uh, credits. I think we've probably seen enough of this. Closure. Put an end to all things. We got the set of Duke's clothing. Awesome. Nice. We also completed the game in hard mode. <laughs> of course we did. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Right up here, you're going to find the playlist for Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen that I have made. And right up here, you're going to find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy. Down in the description of this video, you're going to find a link to my Discord where you can talk to me and my community personally. And of course, until I make the next episode or you catch the next stream, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye!